warm, not so warm day, had a nice day, and uh, a special welcome to everybody worshiping at home. And today is our special Volunteer Sunday, and Susan's going to say a few things, but I was, as we started to think about all the ways people volunteer at church, there were a lot of ways, and there are more that didn't make it on. I didn't put the cemetery board and, and all of that. <laughs> And get a donut if you didn't get a donut. And get one on the way out if you need to. Take them home. We don't want to have them give them to the birds. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone that participates and helps our church. I know I, I do that at the annual meeting too, but if it wasn't for everyone here, we wouldn't have a church. So remember that. And it's, it is key that you don't think it's appreciated, but it's appreciated. <laughs> uh, it takes time, devotion, and, and, and a dedication to serve. And I think it's, it helps me. I don't know, I get, I get, I get, God's with me every time I do something for the church. And I feel like if it helps you, you know, really, it just find it in your heart to help. I know everyone here does, but we wanted to reach out and say, find it in your heart to help us. And we thank you for helping too. Oh, <laughs> and I enjoy it. <laughs> um, and I just want to tell everyone, Cheryl had her eyes done. She had her cataract done, so she's not here. But it's under her card. <laughs> That'll be good. Anything else we had today? Um, so, uh, well, along with yeah. the Volunteer Sunday, we yeah. want to appreciate everybody and hope you feel appreciated. Right, right. You <laughs> too, also, you too. <laughs> we also wanted to tell you that, about the opportunities that there are to serve. Right. You know, like maybe there's something that you, you didn't know we're looking for someone for and, and you'd be willing to do, or maybe there's something else you'd like to do that we uh, haven't even thought of yet, mm -hmm. and that's good too. So. <laughs> and again, I wanted to mention consistory. We had two openings. Um, when people retire. So again, I, it's something that it's the backbone of the church and we appreciate everyone's time and effort. Again, it's, it's one of those things that we're going to, I'm going to talk about this for a couple more Sundays, by the way, but, but it is. It, and, and ladies aid it. We have a good time and all the groups, our Bible study is fun. Exercise class is a blast. <laughs> we really do have a good time with that too. So, but an altar guild, um, we, it's, it's one of those things where it does take time, but it's well appreciated. Yes. Oh, and this week, yeah, we have Ladies Aid, and we have the figures on, on, on Thursday night, and Saturday, did that make it in the bowl? Yes, the prayer okay, and breakfast. Is, right, prayer and breakfast is at 9, down at Williamstown Legion. Oh, Saturday. Yeah, it's this Saturday. Oh, oh maybe it's not in Yeah, my emails are, this Saturday at 9 a.m. down at Williamstown Legion. And then after that, by the way, the Lutheran Church in Reinerton's having an indoor yard sale on Saturday. Um, so after breakfast, we're going to go shopping and get stuff for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have breakfast and we'll have lunch. Okay. Is that it? All right. And then at the end of the, uh, All the survey, the there's yeah. a volunteer survey. And so just to help us, if you'd let us know what, how you feel about uh, volunteering and you know, any anything you have to say, we appreciate that. All right. Anything else? And we also, I also wanted to thank everyone for um, donations to both the SPCA, the confirmation class, went to the SPCA this week and gave all the items and walked the dogs. And I was walked by some dogs. <laughs> and walked at bulls, they're pretty strong. <laughs> And, um, and we played with the cats, and we had a good time. And so it was Dawson Brennan, and Owen Mace, and Carter Moore, and then Carmen Moore drove. So we're really grateful for them, and, and for the Bible school, and, and everybody. There was a lot of donations, and that was nice. Right. And then the food pantry, we also took the items, there are a lot of paper towels, to the food pantry. And a week ago, Saturday, there were 87 households who came for food. So that, we think that's a record, as far as we know. <laughs> so uh, everything that you give is very much appreciated, and we thank you. And if you'd like to help with the food pantry, they, especially now, uh, they need more people because it's pretty busy uh, uh, 
helping everyone. All right, is that it? Okay, all right. Please join in the call to worship in the bulletin. Sovereign Lord, I put my hope in you. I have trusted in you since I was young. You have protected me since the day I was born. I will always praise you. My life has been an example to many. Because you have been my strong defender. Him is count your blessings. It's number three in the supplement.
God, he's gracious and merciful. Please join in the prayer of confession. Praise the Lord, my soul, and do not forget how kind he is. Forgive all my sins and heal all my diseases. The Lord is merciful and loving. He is so loved to my enemy and hold on to his love. He does not keep on rebuking. He is not angry forever. He does not have much trust as we deserve. Let us confess our sins in silence. the good news, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. Through Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. 
Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open ocean. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in dangers from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in the city, in the danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak, and I do not feel weak? Who is led into sin, and I do not inwardly burn? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. Our gospel reading is found in your bulletin. It's from Matthew 13. Verses 18 through 23. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of the wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. This is the good news. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Our hymn is on the handout, um, Be Thou My Vision.
so he could work on his sermon. And Ruth actually brought him his typewriter. And the doctor went into Neil's room to see him typing away. And then the doctor said, Neil, you're going to need to slow down. And Neil did slow down. He went from working 90 hours a week to working 60 hours a week. And can you relate to him? Sometimes it's hard to rest and take a break. Maybe you feel a double dose of responsibility. You take care of your kids and, and all their little friends, or you do your job plus everyone else's, or you work extra to pay for debts and bills, or you're a workhorse taking care of your family members. And, you know, today if you ask someone, hi, how are you doing? The most common answer, you know, beyond, okay, is they'll say, well, I'm really busy. I'm busy. I'm tired. And when's the last time you asked someone, how are you doing? And they said, I'm relaxed. I've got free time. I'm spending a lot of time with my family and friends. I go on dates every week with my spouse. I'm spending time with God. No, instead you hear, I'm busy, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm busy. And what does God think about this? Jesus said in Matthew 11, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Does it sound like God wants you to be tired and busy all the time? No, he wants to give you rest. And maybe you know God wants to give you rest, but you don't know how you could ever actually rest. And today we'll hear some wisdom from the book of Ecclesiastes and some wisdom from the Apostle Paul to help us slow down and enjoy the life that God has given us. Ecclesiastes 4.4 says, And I saw that all toil and all achievement spring from one person's envy of another." This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. And you might think that envy started with social media, or it started when we began seeing the lifestyles of the rich and famous on TV and the internet. But actually, 2,500 years ago, when the book of Ecclesiastes was written, people were comparing themselves to others and getting jealous. And if you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, well, you just can't do it. You know, my next door neighbors really are the Joneses. That's their <laughs> last name, Jones. And right now they're getting a brand new kitchen put in, and their son just bought a boat. And they are great people, you know, I love them. And I wasn't thinking about it before, but now I'm thinking, hey, I'd like a new kitchen and a boat. <laughs> and so we look around and we compare ourselves to others. There's always somebody who has more than you. They're richer, or they're skinnier, or they're smarter, or they're taller, or they're prettier, or happier, or cooler, or they've got a better marriage, or their kids are taller, or more athletic, or their pets behave better or they have a better job. And sometimes we like to look around and feel that, well, there are people who are less than us. Well, they're heavier than me, or they're shorter than me, or they've got a worse marriage than I do. But there's no win in comparison. Ecclesiastes 4.4 says, all this comparison and envy is meaningless. It's a chasing after the wind. It leads to trouble. It can lead to death because you spend so much time staring at somebody else's lifestyle that you go and buy that boat and you spend that money you don't have on your kitchen makeover. And sometimes we compare our family members to others and it can drive us crazy. You know, like I wish my spouse had a better job like that friend of his, or I wish my kids were like my neighbor's kids. But if then you start actually saying out loud to your family members, why can't you be like so-and-so? Well, that's an insult, and that can drive them crazy. You know, it's sort of like 
a tornado touching down in your family instead of a chasing after the wind. So Ecclesiastes warns us that envying someone else is meaningless, that comparing doesn't help. But does that mean you shouldn't care about anything? You know, like don't set goals, don't work to achieve anything? No, because verse 5 says, fools fold their hands and ruin themselves. In other words, don't be a fool and just give up and do nothing in life. The writer of Ecclesiastes says, well, don't envy others, but on the other hand, don't just give up on goals and stop trying to do anything. So the first no-no is envy and complaining, and the second no-no is just not <coughs> caring about anything. So is there another way? And it comes in verse 6. Better is one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. So that means less is better to do less and to buy less and to reach for just one handful of stuff, not two handfuls. And one handful living means you love yourself just the way you are and you love your family and friends exactly as they are. And it means don't be an overfunctioner. An overfunctioner means you take care of yourself and everybody else, right? You do your kids' homework. And you need to step back and let them do it, right? Some parents overfunction because they don't trust their kids can do it on their own. But we all know the best teacher is when we make a mistake. That's the best way we learn. And we don't learn when somebody takes our job over for us. So instead of saying, well, let me do this for you, it's better to let them do it. And if they mess up, to ask, well, what did you learn from this? You know, that's all, no lectures. They'll figure it out. So one handful living also means you no longer act like a superhero. Right? Instead, you get plenty of sleep, you take breaks, and you ask for help when you need it, because the world will keep spinning while you rest. The Apostle Paul teaches us a little more about one handful living. He says in Philippians 4, 11 to 12, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So notice Paul says he learned the secret to being content, whatever the circumstances. And the secret is he leans on the strength of God. He does not say he was born content. He says he learned to be content. So we can all learn to be content, to live reaching for just one handful instead of two. We can ask God for the strength to slow down, to let go, and to find things to celebrate and appreciate, even if, like Paul, we're shipwrecked or in prison. One handful living means you let God fill you up. And I used to enjoy running as a hobby until a couple of years ago I had an injury, I think a torn meniscus. So now I either ride my bike or I walk for exercise instead of running. And I would rather run, <laughs> but I learned to be content walking. I walk on trails and I start to notice the tall trees, which I <coughs> didn't slow down enough to notice before. And I tell the trees I'm sorry when they've fallen over the path and died. And I eat the raspberries and the mulberries because I see the, the berries on the bushes more because I'm going slower, I'm not running past them. And I uh, see more wildflowers. I enjoy them now because I walk. So God has helped me to be content walking. So one handful living means you let God fill you up. And my homework for you this week is to ask yourself, what do I 
I need to let go of so I can accept my life as it is and let myself rest? How do I rely more on God and his strength to be content? So we live in the busy world, and too often we give in to that faster pace and a desire for more. But if we're just tired and busy, are we living the life we want to live? Better is one handful with tranquility. Better is being able to say, I'm enjoying life. I'm happy with the people I love. I'm happy with myself. Happiness does not come from having everything you want. So ask God for his strength to find contentment and tranquility in every situation. Amen. Please stand and join as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. A holy and loving God, we're grateful for that you create us and you love us and you make us co-creators with you, that we are creating our lives. And we pray you help us to lead abundant lives. Help us to have boundaries on what we do so we rest and are able to take a break and let you fill us up. We're grateful for your faithfulness. <coughs> And we ask that we would be one with you, we sense your presence and hear your call. We want to know you intimately. Fill us with your spirit. We pray for peace in Ukraine and for an end to conflict. We pray for uh, the economy that all will have all that they need, food and housing, that their needs are met. And we lift up to you and pray for those who are ill, especially for Ray McNulty and Kathy Baker. We pray in thanksgiving for all the blessings that you give, for miracles you work and strength, for home, family, and friends, for work and relaxation, for the beauty of the world that you created. And we ask uh, now in silence, as we lift our prayer requests and our thanks to you for all that you bless us with. We thank you for sending Jesus to us to save us from our sins. All glory, honor, and power to you, O Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. now a blessing as we receive our offering.
for grace is God. We're grateful for your love for us. We're grateful that we can be your servants. And we pray your blessing on all who have given on these gifts and uh, your blessing on us as we give ourselves to you and seek to be your servants in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this week is, um, what, what, what day is Ryan's birthday? The 19th. The 19th. The 19th is Ryan's birthday. <laughs> and, but it's also Judy and Claude Chalk. I think it's their 55th anniversary. So if you want to send them a card. Um, all right. Now go forth in the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.